Hope everyone's had a fantastic week. And um, oh, just the last couple of weeks, and probably all the time that I've been in the Lord, the one thing that's been a positive, the one thing that's been always there, the one thing that I can rely on, are you guys, the fellowship, my bros and my sisters. And I just want to talk about how much we all, and we do, appreciate the closeness, the truth, and the severity of that communication that we all have together through the one thing, the Spirit of God. That Spirit that binds us together with that core that runs through every, every one of us. And uh, there was this... Um, Reed, don't grab that song. Look over there, will you, do There's this one song that we all know and um, we all sing all the time and it's it's 141. And I just want to read it out. I love this family of God. So closely knitted into one. They've taken me into their heart. And I'm so glad to be a part of this great family. And it is a great family. So won't you join this happy throng? You'll find it's just where you belong. The spirit of the Lord is there. The word of God will be made clear in this great family. Why are we a great family? I think the, the fundamental foundation is in these two verses at the bottom here. It said, the spirit of the Lord is here. And all the people said, it's the spirit of the Lord. It's the spirit of the Lord. And the other one, straight under it, the word of God will be made clear in this great family. Gary, did you read the Gospels when you were playing footy? Or was it when you received the Holy Spirit? The wonderful power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in all of us now. And it dwelled in Gary that night where he just read the Bible and he couldn't get enough. It was nourishment. And we encourage each other. Read, pray, fellowship. This is what we do as we see the day approaching. This is our foundation. Well, me, that's enough about you. Let's talk about me. Me, I joined the fellowship on the 18th of June, 1989. I was age 28. In August the 16th, that's, um, that's when I come along. And August the 16th this year, I will be 61. That's 33 years in the Lord. That's five years after half of my life I've been in the Lord. Praise God, hallelujah. And you know what? That same spirit that dwells in all of us, that raised Christ from the dead, not one ounce, not one fathom has depleted. It's the same yesterday, today and forever. It's the same power. It's the same feeling every time I pray in tongues. Oh, how glorious is it? How, how we are so blessed to be encouraged and uplifted by each and every one of us here today. Praise God. And that wonderful testimony of Mary Ann going through all sorts of dramas and hassles and things and then coming back Thinking, thinking she was going to be rejected, but open arms, come back, 
Praise the Lord. Her life started to click into gear. Praise the Lord. Great testimony. Let's have a look in 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter three, verse five, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. If we could, I'd love to just have a look at that in the Amplified. Holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, Although they have denied its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep far away from them. It doesn't, <laughs> it's got no grey areas there, has it? This nullifies their claim of faith their conduct, their conduct to each other, their conduct to the Lord. We have to have the Holy Spirit. We all have to have the Holy Spirit. Not half, not a quarter. All of us have to have the Holy Spirit. When we do, we gel. We come together in one accord, knowing what's right. And it's just amazing. What have I got written here? You know, other church denominations, I, I was in another denomination. Um, but it wasn't until, like, like the first instant I heard about this amazing thing was um, Jeff Lucky. I was working with him at the factory of my father. And uh, we'd go on a job together. And, and he'd say to me, you know, Roscoe, this... It, you know, you guys keep the Sabbath, but uh, there's no rest for the wicked. Uh, and all these things he was telling me about the Sabbath. And he said, Give, receiving this Holy Spirit is like, remember when Moses went up to the, the mountain and he came back down and he broke the tablets and the, and the children couldn't even look on his face. He had to wear a veil something over his face because it was like the sun. They couldn't even look at it. That's like receiving the Holy Spirit. When you have God's power inside you, this Shekinah glory, this, this wonderful Holy Spirit, it's like that. And I, I pondered it. And, and I, I remembered what he said. But I didn't have any idea of what he was talking about. It was like, like John's testimony, you know, where he says, we explained to him, but when he finally got it, he knew. And then Lee and Ken came down and they told us about it. And we were, we opened the scriptures and we were expounded by it and we were told about this amazing thing. And then after time, we went and to the church and I prayed Lord I, I want this Holy Spirit and, I, and everyone has their own testimony and finally I received it and it was just amazing and I came in and I was adopted into this family of God and uh, it's just amazing when I was adopted into the family of God it was like receiving you know, this wonderful jackpot, you know, getting a ticket to the New Jerusalem for free, you know, having a chance of having eternal life. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, we all want to expand our family, don't we? We all want to have more coming into our fellowship. We want to have brothers and sisters. We want to have heaps and heaps of them. And that's what we do when we talk to people. And what happened, uh, a couple of times I've said this to people, but uh, a little while ago I was working for a client 
and he said, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? Which was Saturday. And I said, oh, I've got to get a talk ready for, uh, I'm giving a talk at, at church. Oh, what are you going to talk about? And I said, I have not a clue what I'm going to talk about, but I've been thinking about one subject. And uh, he said, oh, well, make sure it's relevant. I said, yeah, that, that, yep, I will. Thanks. And uh, anyway, we moved on and we went to another room of uh, this um, big place. And he said, oh, I'm just going to put on a, a Christian song, but it's in my language. And I said, oh, okay, no worries. And he played the played the song and he explained to me what the words were saying it was about it was about grace and about love and about the lord and i said oh that's it's got really nice music and but i can't understand the words but thank you for that and i'm working away on this door and he said to me so do you uh speak any other languages and i said oh only one other language and he said what's that i said the the language of men and angels and he goes and he looked at me funny and I said, well, remember on the day of Pentecost when um, the 12 disciples were there and the mother of Jesus was there and the other women and 120 people all, all together when the tongues of fire came down. And I said, they all received the Holy Spirit. They all spoke in this tongue. Like, and he goes, do you speak in tongues? And I said, yes, I do. And he goes, oh, really? And I said, yep. And uh, I told him about a few miracles over in, um, not Africa, where did I go? Mm -hmm. PNG. <laughs> and um, oh, I had a bit of a talk to him. So just pray for <laughs> me that that turns out for, for a good witness. But anyway, and this is what it is. Any time, anywhere, we talk about the Lord. And if it comes up, look, there's nothing to lose about talking about people on the Lord. We want them to be part of our family and all the people said. Um, the, uh, I love this family of God. Look, um, I, I've made, if, if my, let's put it this way. If my mistakes were dollars, with my mistakes and shortcomings and shortfalls were dollars, I would have a mansion on a huge big farm by now. But whatever I do, whatever I've done, the Lord and you guys forgive me and we move on. And that's what it's, a family is all about. It's about forgiveness. It's about the love of the Lord. The, you know, that wonderful gift that the Lord gave us. Um. But being part of this family, we are richer than a millionaire and all the people said. It's not about the money. It's about being rich in the Lord, rich with you guys. Um, let's have a look at uh, 2 Samuel. Second Samuel. Uh, Verse 9, chapter 19, I hope I got it right, and 16. And it's our, it's our loyalty to God and our loyalty to each other. And uh, this is a story about what happened with, remember the story about King David and his son Absalom? And Absalom turned against him and tried to, uh, conquer the kingdom and David went out into the wilderness and Absalom had um, a lot of people behind him and David had a lot of people and, and the people started coming out towards David and, and joining with him and they they had this um, Barney and David said if you can spare Absalom look after him kindly and don't anything happen to him but what happened with Absalom he hit this tree the fork in the tree with his head and he got Beard and he was hanging there and um, the captain said to him, the servant okay finish him off and the servant said I'm not touching the anointed I'm not doing that he, he had respect for the anointed and he wasn't going to do it because he knew if he did David King David would kill him but that's not the story I want to go to the story was I'll just read it uh -huh. then Shimei 
the son of Gia, a Benjamite of Barum, heard and came down with the men from the, hang on, I've got it in Amplified. We'll go back to um, normal King James. So we go to uh, 16. Uh, down with the men of uh, Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin, Benjamin with him and uh, Zibiah, the servant of the, the house of Saul and his 15 sons and his 20 servants with him. And they went over Jordan before David. Now this is David coming, coming over the, over the, um, the river. And there went over a ferry boat carry, carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gira, fell down before the king and he was come over to Jordan. Now this guy with all his household and village and, and, and Saul's descendants and all the people come over to David on this, on this boat and help David with all his family and all his stuff and everything else over to the other side. And um, now this, these guys were on, on the side of um, um, Absalom, but they wanted to be on David's side. They were under their under rule, so they couldn't get away. And, uh, and fell down before the king, and he was come over to Jordan and said unto the king, let not thy Lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did. Um, perversely, the day that my Lord, the king, went out to Jerusalem, that the king should take it to heart. Now he's pleading for his life here. He's pleading that David forgive him. For thy servant doth now but know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet the Lord, the King. So he's saying, I was the first guy that come to help you and, I, and confess my sins toward you so that you can forgive me. But Abishai, the son of Zerah, answered and said, shall not Shimei be put to death for this because he uh, caused the Lord's anointed, cursed the Lord's anointed. Now this answer was, was uh, pretty remarkable from David. And David said, what have I do with you, ye son of Zerah, that ye should this day be advisories to me, shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel. So he's put him in his place, the council, and put him in his place and said, I'm the king here. No one's getting put to death. And he said, therefore, the king said unto Semei, thou shalt not die. And the king swear unto him. He promised him all your kin, all your um, villages, all the people that you came with and the people who were back there, your, your wives and your children and everyone else will have a promise that you'll be safe and you'll come back into the land of Israel. Praise the Lord. He was forgiven. How would you be if you were, if you were there that day? You were, you were on, a, on, this, on this kilter of we are going to keep your life or we are going to lose your life. And I say this because there's a, there is a promise here for us as well. We were promised to live forever or die forever. It is our choice. We have a choice to serve the Lord, to serve our brethren, or not to. When we serve ourselves and we do our own thing and we want to do everything on our own without the Lord, it is a rough road. It's up and down. 
when we come to the Lord, no matter what circumstance or situation, and give him, lay down our life and give him homage to us and, and give him our life, then he gives us a life of amazing promises, benefits. We have a smooth road. We can go to him anytime. We can go to our brothers and sisters. We can go to the Lord and pray and know that he's got our back. He has the answers to life. When the Holy Spirit enters our body, what happens? We, we become the elect. We become number one with the Lord. We become the Lord's chosen people. What, what a privilege. And then we can portray the Lord's statutes, the Lord's will, and that is forgiveness, really powerful inner love for each other. That's not what is out in the world today. That's getting depressed. That's the 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 the, 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 the devil is a roaring lion and he's getting more and more worse in these last days. That way, that means we get better and better. Amen. Or more peculiar. <laughs> um, he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Let's have a look in Acts. Acts one four Acts one four Acts one four says and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father. We all know what that promise is now. But these guys had no idea what the promise was. Maybe he had an inkling, but he said, wait. The promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, this whole event was spoken by the prophets of old, but this prophet John was the leader of all the prophets. And he baptized with water, and Jesus was saying, But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Then they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And it's like the um, King David said to that guy, don't butt in. Don't come and say what you've got to say. I know you're the council, but I'm the king. And this is the Lord saying to these guys, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, even Goulburn, <laughs> even Australia. When we receive this wonderful power, can you imagine what these guys must have felt the first time this happened? Like there was 3,000 odd people got baptized that day. What an amazing promise. What an amazing event. Praise the Lord. Um, what have I got here? <clears throat> you know, we've got to trust in God. God's got it in hand. We trust in him and we just leave everything at his feet. We know the Lord has, through our life, the Lord's done some amazing miracles for each and every one of us. Anytime anything comes up, we just do it again. He's our father. He looks after us. We give it to him. 
We trust him and we obey. We all have the same spirit. Um, you know, one point, you know, there's, there's, there's um, churches that don't see eye to eye all, mainly all the time. Um, and it just, it, it wrecks the whole church. I had, a, um, I think I've told you this before, but my two brothers don't talk to each other anymore because of a business matter. You know, that just wrecks the whole show. Why would, you, it's, it's just business and they, and they don't even talk to each other anymore. If, if my mum passed away soon, one wouldn't go to the funeral because the other one's there. Um, one's spirit-filled, one's not spirit-filled. They, The spirit-filled one should know better. Just go and apologise and take it on the chin. You know, it's their brothers crying out loud. Well, well oh, I don't know. You know, you've got to have forgiveness in your heart. You know, we were born into sin. Each and every one of us were born into sin. We don't deserve a cracker from God. We don't deserve anything from God. Yet, he came to this earth, was murdered, died a horrific death, went home and sent a part of him back so we may experience or taste the pureness and wonderfulness of God where we can cry Abba Father, where we can know something of God, where we can forgive each other and people in the world like it's just amazing absolutely amazing and for someone that's spirit filled that can't forgive his brother i find that preposterous anyway let's move on there was a documentary i watched not just recently about a breakaway church from the um the salt lake city church what do you call them mormons and um, what they do, they, they believe in this one guy. They put him up on a big pedestal and there's this one guy and he's the prophet. He's the prophet of God. And God tells him stuff and he tells the people. And I tell you what, it is absolutely scandalous and horrific. It's absolute sin at its worst. It's so wicked what this, what this guy does to his flock, to his parishioners. It's just unbelievable i could not believe this there is one mediator for us all and that is jesus christ no man no organization it's jesus christ who is our propitiation he is our mediator let's we'll finish off now we'll have a look at um first corinthians 13 and just start in chapter uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. So not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. 
carry never fails, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Wherever there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then, but when face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Amazing. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The word charity is love. And in my concordance, that charity word means agape. Without agape, without God's love, without, we, we can only accept God's love through the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, without this agape, we are like Peter and we will deny Jesus three times. We will not forgive. We will not come close to the Lord. We will not obey the Lord. We will do what we want to do. And we will think we are righteous in doing it. But until we have the Holy Spirit, the love of God, the agape love dwelling inside of us, we now can love with a pure heart our brothers and sisters. We now can forgive each other and the people in the world. We now can have that true love. What have I written here? Um, Peter had no power and strength or commitment until he received the Holy Spirit, the agape love. This power to love and forgive. Love the brethren and love the brothers and sisters. In doing so, you are loving God. And all people said. Mm -hmm. Amen.